G'day. It's great to be back in this studio. It's been a while since the COVID lockdown put paid to me using it. But today we're having a look at the new first race of season 2020, the Austrian GP, and how it will differ from other races. Are you excited about the Austrian GP? It's going to be dramatically different than any other race because, of course, we have no crowds. We also have a dramatically lower number of people in the paddock. Now, teams have been limited to 80 people per team. Uh, we're not going to have anywhere near the number of media. We're not going to have any corporates. We're not going to have any spectators. And it's going to be a completely different setup. So let's jump straight away to the paddock. How will it look? Well, for a start, we won't be having any of these magnificent hospitality suites. They won't be coming. So obviously the teams get to save a fair whack of money there. But this will not be the scene that you see in the paddock, where you've got on the left-hand side all the engineering motorhomes, and on the right-hand side, the hospitality suites. So uh, you can effectively just wipe out everything on the right-hand side here, and all the action will be on the left-hand side. But in the paddock, what will be different? Well, we believe that every driver will be wearing masks. Certainly, all of the people in every team have to stay within their team. So no one from Williams can nip next door and have a chat with someone from Racing Point. That won't be happening. There'll be very strict rules in regards to that. But before any of the team members get to Austria, they need to be tested on their home soil. And that's been going on already over the last couple of days, with uh, team members being tested by doctors, getting that thing shoved down the back of their nose and throat, which is... Um, it's not an enjoyable process, but it's certainly required. Then they head to Austria. Now, it's not as we thought with everybody going on charter flights. In fact, a lot of the teams are just sending people on normal, regular commercial flights and on different days. When they get to Austria, they then are tested again, and then they're tested every two days during the event. And if somebody does come down with COVID-19 at the track, F1 says that the race won't be stopped. Those people will simply be isolated and the race will continue on as per normal. So what other differences can we expect at the Austrian GP? Well, you won't see drivers at the end of the race congratulating other team members or their own. Uh, you won't see this sort of celebration, that close contact. You also won't see this level of people here because there will be no parked ferme in the pit lane, which is the normal course of action. You certainly won't be seeing any podium celebration like this. There'll be no spraying of champagne up on that particular podium. I'm not even sure whether they're going to be taking that. So what will happen post-race? Well, it's thought that the three cars, the top three, will end up on the track with very few people around them. And just quickly before I forget, I'm holding here the Sergio Perez photo book. This is one of 23 different books, and uh, I urge you to get online to kimilman.com and pick up a copy of your favorite driver's photo book. There's also Men of the Paddock and Women of the Paddock. And as you can see, this is not paper, this is substrate. This is quite solid card. This book is the soft cover. This one, the hard cover. There's a little bit of difference here in terms of width, but certainly the hard cover is a more solid product. But either are beautifully printed and you can get them online at kimelman.com. Let's jump back to pre-race and normally you'd see lots of interviews with drivers on the grid. Now, there'll only be a bare minimum of people on the grid. So what I imagine will happen, this hasn't been confirmed yet, but I think it's uh, pretty close to being confirmed, is that the drivers will be interviewed in front of their respective garages. And that'll be important because uh, I imagine that we all want to hear what it's been like in the lead up to a rather unusual situation with this Grand Prix and with the, the remaining seven that'll be also behind closed doors. Although I am told that it may well be that uh, after race three, that there will be a review of the situation to see whether any more people can be allowed in. And I should tell you, media-wise, I won't be going because there are only uh, a handful of photographers who are allowed to attend the event, plus one photographer per team. Now, whoever is shooting for that team can go, but they can't go outside the team bubble. All of the teams also tell me that they will be going back to the hotel at night and pretty much a lockdown. They're allowed an exercise session, I believe, or certainly some of the teams will allow that, but otherwise they can't go out. They will not be going out to dinner at restaurants in town. They are to remain pretty much exclusively amongst their group. 
Uh, interestingly enough, I was asked about Thursday track walks, and I didn't think they would happen, but I'm told that they will happen. And if that's the case, photographers, those that are lucky enough to be there, the 15 or so that get an invite, will be allowed to shoot them, but only from behind the wire. Now, normally, we'll be out on the track with these drivers, walking with them, side on, behind, in front, and have some sort of uh, close interaction. That won't be happening. Harking back to the media, normally, this is the media centre at one of the tracks, normally every one of these seats would be full, especially on race day. And while very few photographers will be attending, that will be the same with journalists. There'll be a bare minimum. And normally in the media centre, which you're looking at here, you'd find that every one of those seats would be full of, in this case, photographers, but journalists would be in a separate area. That won't be the case here. And I'm thinking in a media centre that might normally house 120 photographers, there'll be five maybe 10 tops. Jumping back to race day, there'll be no driver's parade. There'll be no need to because the drivers have no one to wave to. And as I mentioned before, the interviews that would normally be done on that driver's parade would be probably done standing outside the garage and with the reporter social distancing. It might even be just a set up microphone. We'll know come Sunday. The shots that will be coming out of Austria will be markedly different too than what you normally see. So this is an iconic shot at the top of the turn at the top of the hill and it's uh, full of spectators in the background, mostly Max supporters on the right. But this year, you're gonna find that those seats are completely empty. Now, whether they put some signage over there, we're not quite sure yet. But with Austria, there are a number of shots that won't change. Shots like this, where you don't see any crowd and you just get beautiful trees behind. And of course, the last turn where you see the beautiful red and white of the Austrian flag painted vividly on the runoff areas. Another Austrian tradition, the green carpet, won't be happening either. Traditionally, on the Saturday and Sunday, you'd have hundreds of fans down below waiting for their favourite driver to come through. And, and almost all of them did. They'd sign autographs and chat to the media. That won't be happening. Now, I'm not even sure how close spectators can get to the track. Obviously, at some point, there will be a gate which no spectators will be allowed. And I don't think it's going to be anywhere near as close as this, which is right up next to the um, main grandstand on the pit straight. I'm kind of thinking they'll have a, a separate gate further out. And I have no doubt that there will be people lining up there hoping to get a shot of the drivers coming in, because normally there's only that one road that goes into the track and the drivers must come in and out of there. And I gather there will be some people there taking pictures and if you've got any, I'd love to see them and would love to share them with my Instagram audience. Some other shots that will look markedly different, this shot here with beautiful crowds at the top of the shot, that won't be happening. This shot here, which of course we have max supporters in that stand and you can shoot with a quite a long lens from a long way away and get an orange blur in the background. Forget that, that won't be happening either. And what of the rest of the calendar? We're still in the dark as to what's happening post the final race on that calendar already put out, which is the Italian race. I'm hearing there'll be another race in Italy and one in Portugal among others. But of course, you've got America, which is in all sorts of dire straits with COVID. Brazil's not going too well. Mexico's having troubles. So those races, uh, I would suggest, are doubtful. And to plan this far out and just hope that those situations turn around is a fair gamble. So there is plenty up in the air at the moment. And I think the fact that we're getting up and running next week with Austria is such a great tribute to F1 they've managed to pull this off. I think it's going to be intriguing to see how many people tune in to watch these races. Because there is no spectator component, because everyone has waited so darn long. When was our last race? It was Abu Dhabi, wasn't it? In uh, late November last year, early December. So that's a, a heck of a long time without an F1 race. And it's not the longest time we've gone. There has been examples of previous years where we've had longer gaps, but there is such a pent up demand for Formula One that uh, I think these are gonna rate pretty darn well. And if you're a TV network, you'd be happy to hear it because you've missed out on quite a lot of content. In terms of photography, I'm not sure what images I'll be able to access. I know that uh, some teams are making images available and F1 may also make some available. But it'll all come to a head next Thursday when it kicks off with Media Day, albeit a slightly more subdued Media Day. Uh, I happen to know that uh, one of the uh, Dutch crews aren't coming to F1, TV crews, but then I hear that uh, one of the German teams is coming. So it just depends on, on which particular broadcaster has managed to gain favour, I guess, with the F1 organisation to get access. Because as we simply agree, we can't have too many people in there 
uh, compromising the safety of those who work closely in the sport. And I'm talking, uh, obviously, drivers. Imagine if one of the drivers came down with it, and um, perhaps it's a real good opportunity for a reserve driver. I'm sure they'll be there. And also won't be hoping that something happens. I'm sure they'll be absolutely ready should the untoward happen. That's a quick wrap on some of the changes you can expect at the Austrian Grand Prix, the real first race of 2020. Thanks for watching. Remember, you can find all of my images at ProStarPix.com. I'd love you to pick up one of my photo books. They're fantastic, great value, and they'll be sent almost anywhere in the world. You can get them at KimIllman.com. You'll find my blogs and podcasts also at KimIllman.com, and all my pictures live from the track and during the week on Instagram at Kim Elman. Thank you for watching and stay passionate.